Amplitronic. Listen to the difference. Hi, my name is Ed and I'm a design engineer at Amplitronic. In this video, we'll be looking at how to commission a CLD1 counterloop system using an Ampatronic Loopworks R1 test receiver. Before starting this, ensure everything is installed and correctly positioned. For help with this, see our video on installing a CLD1. To commission the system, we'll need a calibrated field strength meter. Here, we're using an Ampatronic R1 receiver with the Loopworks Measure iOS app. There is another video available showing the process with the standalone FSM meter. The other items you will need are a pair of headphones, a small flat head screwdriver for adjusting the CLD1 controls, and a way of providing test signals into the amplifier. This can be an MP3 player with the correct test tones downloaded from ampatronic.com slash signals. Just make sure you have no EQ set on the playback device, which could affect the readings. You need to have a project and system set up in Loopworks for each loop that you are commissioning. These can be created either in the portal from any web browser or directly within Loopworks Measure app. We're showing these being made in the portal and entering the minimum required information, but you can fill in more fields. You will need a client first, then make a new project. Once the project is made, click into it and add at least one new system. You can add multiple here if you have several counters in the same building. Make sure to set the system type to service point as well, as this will affect some of the verdicts as you go through the test procedures. Click into the system and click Manage Test Points. You need at least four test points to give a verdict from a commissioning test, but for counter loops, six positions are determined by the performance standards. We can simply call these A to F for simplicity, but we will also enter the heights for each test point. With this done, we can now go into the app. In the app, go into the project and system selection. If you can't find the one you just set up, try pressing the synchronize button. With the project and system selected, press the start test button in the bottom left. Choose Start Commissioning Test and name your session. The first step is a page of instructions on test positions. If you follow the diagram we showed at the start and the way we set up test points in the portal, then for a standard counter loop, this will be correct. Move straight on to step two by swiping or tapping the right arrow. Here, we will test background noise. With the amplifier turned off, take a reading in each of the six positions. Ideally, we want all of the readings to be less than minus 32 decibels to get a full pass. It can be acceptable for some readings to be up to minus 22 decibels if the noise doesn't have a big impact on intelligibility. If the noise levels are in this range, you should listen and make comments on the sound you hear. Any readings above minus 22 decibels will fail this test. In each position, press Save and then OK on the pop-up. Then select the next test point and repeat. You may need to press the reset button before saving a reading to ensure you are saving an accurate peak level. Background noise is normally caused by other electrical devices in the area. So if readings are too high, try identifying the source by moving the meter around to see where the levels increase or decrease. You can also try turning off things like lighting or other devices which might cause noise. Once the cause is identified, you can report this to the client for further investigation. Next, we will test for field strength. Move to step three by swiping or tapping the arrow. Turn the CLD1 power supply on, make sure your audio source is plugged in and the microphone is unplugged, then play the combi or combination file. This will play a signal that alternates between pink noise and one kilohertz sine wave you will see the signal level change by approximately 6 dB between these two sounds, and we need to make sure that the readings are taken at the highest peaks caused by the 1 kHz tone. If needed, adjust your audio source volume or the input level on the CLD1 to make sure the input signal LED is on. Again, we need to test this on six defined positions, and we are looking for all readings to be within plus or minus 6 dB. 
Use the loop current control to turn the amplifier up or down if you need to adjust the readings you are getting. We allow some additional tolerance to give a qualified pass if the readings are slightly outside this range. Make sure to reset and let the meter pick up at least one peak of the sine wave signal before saving a test result. The next step asks two questions to confirm that we have achieved 0 dB in one position and that the variation within the listening area is all within plus and minus 6 dB. If you have successfully set up your system, the answer to both of these should be yes. Step 5 is frequency response. For this, we will need to change our input signal to play pink noise. This allows us to look at how the system is performing across the full range of sounds to make sure it will reproduce speech in a clear, intelligible way. In a wooden counter environment, these readings should be similar at any given test position and no adjustment should be needed. If the counter has metal in the frame or surface, then you are likely to see the 100 Hz showing a higher reading and the 5 kHz showing a lower reading. Turn the MLC control on the amplifier up gradually and retest one of the positions. This control adjusts the frequency response, pivoting around 1 kHz, which will allow you to compensate for the effects of metal. Take readings in each of the test positions as before ensuring that you achieve a pass verdict with the frequency response as flat as possible within the central green zone. The next step requires you to plug in headphones and listen to the sound quality from the loop. Unplug the audio source and plug the microphone back in. You may need to adjust the input level control if you do not see the signal LED coming on when you're talking. Speak into the microphone while holding the meter within the intended listening area. You may wish to have a colleague speak if it's difficult to do this by yourself. Read each of the questions and select the answer that represents the sound or behavior of the system. With the microphone still active, talk into the microphone again and save a reading to ensure the signal level is at a suitable level, similar to when we were using the test signals at the start. Only one reading is required to achieve a verdict here, but you can test in more positions. Step 8 is designed to ensure the amplifier and gain structure has not added a lot of extra noise to the background level we tested in the first step. Mute or unplug the microphone and take a reading at least one of the test positions. Ideally, this should be below minus 47 dB, but as long as the noise in a given position has not increased by more than 3 dB relative to the background noise, then it will also achieve a pass. The overspill step is optional and not relevant if you have a single loop to test with no privacy concerns. Note that counter loops are never designed to be specifically low spill, but the field will drop off quickly with distance due to the small coil. If we have multiple counters, we recommend a minimum distance of around 1.2 meters between the centers of each loop. To test overspill between them, plug your audio source back in and play the combi tone again. You should have a dedicated, separate test point set up for any overspill measurements. We ideally want to achieve the same levels as we tested for with background noise, but spill from counter loops can be acceptable up to around minus 22 dB, depending on the acoustic environment. The final step is to report on the steps taken by the venue to ensure that the system is available to use and stays in good working order. There should be clear signage indicating where the loop is to be used, and the venue staff should know how the system works and be having it regularly checked. If the commissioning is happening at the early stages of a building sign-off, then these questions can be left unanswered, with a comment to note that they should be undertaken to guarantee full compliance. Once finished, press Stop Test, and you will see the result of each test and an overall verdict. You can tap into any section to see more detail. It's worth noting that you can access this screen at any time throughout the test by tapping the results button. This lets you check the results you've saved as you go along, so you can make sure any issues are addressed on site and you achieve the best possible verdict. Make sure everything is synchronized. If you don't have a data connection on site, then you may need to open the app and synchronize when you get back to the office. Now you can log back into the web portal and open the system we set up at the start 
Click into the commissioning session, which we've just finished. You can now see all of your results. Click the review and edit button to remove this from the app and allow any extra notes to be added. We can click into any test result to see the full data captured from the app, make final updates to any answers, and we have the ability to remove whole test points or exclude certain readings if needed. You are not able to manually edit the measurement data generated from the app. Once happy with all the results, click the Issue and Close button to put the session into a read-only state, and we can then click to print the report. This will generate a certificate of the commissioning test, the first page in the summary of each section, and overall results with any notes. The rest of the pages are the full detailed measurement results from each test that you've completed. Finally, you can click the Download PDF button to generate a PDF copy of the certificate to issue to the client. That's the system fully commissioned and ready to provide assistance to any hearing aid users. Thank you for watching. If you've got any further questions, please contact our support team using live chat, support at ampatronic.com or 01636 610 062. Ampatronic. Listen to the difference.